U.S. wants to increase attack submarine fleet to 80 vessels by 2045, Esper says. U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper has unveiled the Pentagon's plan for building up a navy that proposes having up to 80 attack submarines in service by 2045. Under our proposal, Battle Force 45 will possess the following characteristics. First, a larger and more capable submarine force, Esper said on Tuesday. The study reached a clear consensus on the need to rapidly increase of attack submarines, the most survivable strike platform in a future great power conflict, to the range of 70 to 80 in the fleet. Esper added that the U.S. Navy should, at the minimum, quickly begin building three new Virginia-class submarines a year. The proposal aims to have over 500 manned and unmanned ships in the U.S. Navy by 2045, including between 8 to 11 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers and 6 light aircraft carriers to maintain a global presence in a conflict with major powers, Esper said. The plan also proposes having 60 to 70 smaller combatant ships by 2045, Esper asserted. The Marine Corps is currently in the process of implementing its force structure plan, and I support the Commandant's vision to recalibrate to great power competition, the Trump appointee said. The 25-year plan, called Battle Force 45, will be sent to Congress in the near future, Esper offered. Battle Force 2045 calls for a more balanced Navy of over 500 manned and unmanned ships. Further, we will reach 355 traditional battle force ships prior to 2035, the time at which the PRC aims to fully modernize its military. And most importantly, we now have a credible path for reaching 355 plus ships in an era of fiscal constraint. Under our proposal, Battle Force 2045 will possess the following characteristics. First, a larger and more capable submarine force. The study reached a clear consensus on the need to rapidly increase of attack submarines, the most survivable strike platform in a future great power conflict, to the range of 70 to 80 in the fleet. If we do nothing else, the Navy must begin building three Virginia-class submarines a year as soon as possible. Additionally, we intend to refuel the 7th Los Angeles-class submarine and continue investing in the future attack submarine SSNX. Meanwhile, we will continue to modernize the undersea strategic deterrent, the most survivable leg of the nu nuclear triad. Second, nuclear-powered carriers will remain our most visible deterrent with the ability to project power and execute sea control missions across the globe. And to continue enhancing their survivability and lethality, we are developing the air wing of the future, capable of engaging at extended ranges. At the same time, we continue to examine options for light carriers that support short takeoff or vertical landing aircraft. One model we are considering is the USS America, that is equipped with more than a dozen F-35Bs. Light carriers provide additional presence and capacity to carry out day-to-day -day missions and free up supercarriers for more critical high-end fights. While we anticipate that additional study will be required to assess the proper high-low mix of carriers, eight to 11 nuclear carri carriers will be necessary to execute a high-end conflict and maintain our global presence, with up to six light carriers joining them. Third, our future force will comprise between 140 to 240 unmanned and optionally manned surface and subsurface vis vessels of all types, with the potential to perform a wide range of missions, from resupply and surveillance to mine laying and missile strikes. These are another of distributed maritime operations. Moreover, they will, they will add significant offensive and defensive capabilities to the fleet at an affordable cost in terms of both sailors and dollars. Earlier this month, the Sea Hunter prototype completed operations with the USS Russell. 
demonstrating that unmanned surface vehicles are technologically feasible and operationally valuable. Fourth, the future fleet will contain more and smaller surface combatants. Study results indicate that the introduction of 60 to 70 smaller combatants into the fleet will not only increase capacity to conduct distributed maritime operations, but it will also free other critical assets for more efficient mission distribution. As a preview of where we are headed, earlier this year, the Navy awarded a $795 million contract to purchase the first ship of a new class of guided missile frigates with an option to purchase nine more, totaling $5.6 billion. This is the first new major shipbuilding program the Navy has sought in more than a decade and will support the full range of military options. Fifth, sufficient strategic lift and logistics vessels are key to the sustainability of distributed operations. Initial estimates identify the need for 70, 70 to 90 combat logistics ships, but further work is underway to determine if the number of logistics ships forecasted in this report are sufficient for the future fight. Our shipbuilding report will also address our sea lift plans to ensure ground combat forces can get to the fight on time and with sufficient combat power. Sixth, it will possess unmanned ship-based aircraft of all types. The Navy must develop and deploy carrier-based unmanned aircraft of all types. This includes fighters, refuelers, early warning, and electronic attack aircraft. While this was not analyzed in detail in the study, we will continue to assess the proper mix and range needed to overcome tomorrow's threats. Seventh, and finally, we will integrate the Marine Corps new force design. The Marine Corps is currently in the process of implementing its force structure plan, and I support the Commandant's vision to recalibrate to great power competition. As such, we see a need for more amphibious warfare ships than previously planned in the 50 to 60 range, but more work needs to be done in this area as well. The five operational attributes and three non-warfighting imperatives I listed above will drive Battle Force 45 to be a more lethal, survivable, adaptable, sustainable, modern, and larger force than we have seen in many years.